In today's reading, Paul heals a crippled man. He had been crippled from birth. And the people start calling him and Barnabas by the names of Greek gods. But the way Paul and Barnabas respond to this is pretty great. So stick around. Hey, welcome to Branch Together, the channel that helps you grow spiritually by guiding you through the New Testament in 10 minutes a day right here on YouTube. We also make videos that help you study and understand the Bible well on your own. Today, we see Paul and Barnabas accused or uh, called as Greek gods. I was inspired by this today, this account, and I think you will be as well when you see it unfold. So let's pray, and then we'll go ahead and read Acts chapter 14. Lord, God, we thank you. We thank you for this opportunity to come to your scripture. God, I, I just pray from my heart right now that wherever, wherever we are today, as we, as we listen into your scripture, that we hear from you, Jesus. I pray that hearts are changed, that, that we're stirred up to, to worship you and that we're stirred up to serve you. God, we so deeply want to see your word transform lives. We ask that today, Lord. In your name we pray. Amen. Acts chapter 14. In Iconium, they entered the Jewish synagogue as usual and spoke in such a way that a great number of both Jews and Greeks believed. But the unbelieving Jews stirred up the Gentiles and poisoned their minds against the brothers. So they stayed there a long time and spoke boldly for the Lord, who testified to the message of his grace by enabling them to do signs and wonders. But the people of the city were divided, some siding with the Jews and others with the apostles. When an attempt was made by both the Gentiles and the Jews with their rulers to mistreat and stone them, they found out about it and fled to Lyconian towns of Lystra and Derbe, and to the surrounding countryside. There they continued preaching the gospel. In Lystra, a man was sitting who was without strength in his feet. He had never walked, and had been lame from birth. He listened as Paul spoke. After looking directly at him and seeing that he had faith to be healed, Paul said in a loud voice, Stand up on your feet. And he jumped up. And he began to walk around. When the crowd saw what Paul had done, they shouted, saying in Lyconian language, The gods have come down to us in human form. Barnabas they called Zeus and Paul Hermes, because he was the chief speaker. The priest of Zeus, whose temple was just outside the town, brought bowls and wreaths to the gates because he intended with the crowds to to offer a sacrifice. The apostles, Barnabas and Paul, tore their robes when they heard this and rushed into the crowd shouting, People, why are you doing these things? We are people also just like you, and we are proclaiming good news to you that you turn from these worthless things to the living God who made the heaven, the earth, the sea, and everything in them. In past generations, he allowed all the nations to go their own way although he did not leave himself without a witness, since he did what is good by giving you rain from heaven and fruitful seasons and filling you with food and your hearts with joy. Even though they said these things, they barely stopped the crowds from sacrificing to them. Some Jews came from Antioch and Iconium, and when they won over the crowds, they stoned Paul and dragged him out of the city, thinking he was dead. After the disciples gathered around him, he got up and went into the town, The next day, he left with Barnabas for Derby. After they had preached the gospel in the town and made many disciples, they returned to Lystra and Iconium and to Antioch, strengthening the disciples by encouraging them to continue in the faith and by telling them it is necessary to go through many hardships to enter the kingdom of God. When they had appointed elders for them in every church and prayed with fasting, they committed them to the Lord in whom they had believed. They passed through Pisidia and came to Pamphylia. 
After they had spoken the word in Perga, they went down to Atalia. From there they sailed back to Antioch, where they had been commended to the grace of God for the work they had now completed. After they arrived and gathered the church together, they reported everything God had done with them, and that he had opened the door of faith to the Gentiles. And they spent a considerable time with the disciples. So the scene I want to focus on today is verses 8 to 18. There's a crippled man who hasn't walked since birth. And Paul comes to him and he sees that he's actually believing in Jesus. And and he commands this man to be healed. The man sprang up and began walking. Imagine how people would have felt knowing this guy had never walked before. Well, these people think that Paul and Barnabas must be gods. So they start calling them Zeus and Hermes, who was Zeus's son in Greek mythology. What Paul and Barnabas does inspired me today when I read this. When they hear people praising them as gods, they tore their garments to show how sad it made them. And then they rushed into the crowd. And they lift up their voices, telling people to reorient their eyes to the true and living God. Couple observations. First, I think many people with various gifts in the church are tempted to take the praise for ourselves. Preaching and teaching, for instance, or worship leader, choir director, or, or even, even dealing with the finances, being a treasurer or, or whatever your role, you name it. I, I think it's easy to think too highly of ourselves. Paul and Barnabas rejected this opportunity to let themselves be lifted up. So, do we do things for the praise of people or for the praise of God? That's our first question. And second, they actually did something about it. They weren't quiet. They were, they were passionate about correcting the wrong big ideas of the people around them. So, what would it look like if if we were passionate to stand up for the true God and to actually speak up when people around us have bad ideas about God, or perhaps when they call other things or people as gods, just as the people in the story did. I'm imagining so many of us who worship celebrities or financial stability or becoming famous or whatever, when our lives are not ordered around God, at the top, they're out of whack, and we need to stop and reorient them. And we need to help others by speaking up and encouraging them to do the same. That's all for today. I'll see you tomorrow.